Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Uh, there is a law that just passed in the House of Representatives that if it goes into law, will make your Bible illegal. Let's talk about that, but let's pray first. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood that was shed. We thank you for salvation by grace through faith. We thank you for our perfect King James Bible. Now we ask you to lead us by thy Holy Spirit into all truth and rightly divide the nation of Israel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about House Bill H.R. 60 nine zero that just passed the house of representatives it is the anti-semitism awareness act of 2023 hr 6090 the anti-semitism awareness act of 2023 now let me just say in the beginning and opening here that Bible believers are not anti-Semitic. Matter of fact, Bible believers you will find to be your number one supporters and lovers of the nation of Israel. We're going to get in this video and we're going to talk about how some other Christians, quote unquote, are not supporters of Israel and are in fact participating in the devil's program against Israel. So we are not anti-Semitic in any way, shape, or form. But let's look at this law real quick. Um, in that law, the first question, it makes anti-Semitism illegal. But anti-Semitism just means being against Jews, all right? Being against Israel, being against Jews. But in something like that, uh, we have to come to the understanding of, well, what would be considered anti-Semitism? And I mean, that <laughs> you could think this is anti-Semitic. This guy can say, no, that's not anti-Semitic. And Somebody could be offended by this and it wouldn't affect anybody. I mean, it, it could be so vague. So they had to come up with a means by which to determine what type of speech or literature is anti-Semitic. All right. And here's how they did that. In the law, they said in determining what is and isn't anti-Semitic, that they would take the definition into account by the definition of IHRA, which is the International Holocaust, Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, the IHRA, is the means by which this law is to be interpreted. So we say, is this anti-Semitic? We go and say, well, what does IHRA say? All right. And IHRA has the guidelines. So let's look at the IHRA guidelines here real quick. And uh, I'm going to put those up. Boom. <laughs> Hey, aren't you glad I figured out that app? <laughs> hey, so there, there it is. There's the IHR guidelines. Now, if you'll go down to the, uh, the, the area that's highlighted in blue, and this one says, it says, uh, this would be anti-Semitic. Using the symbols and images associated with classic anti-Semitism, e.g. E means that is, that is, here's the, here's the part, claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel to characterize Israel Israelis. 
But the key wording there is, in the blue there, claims of Jews killing Jesus. So, if this law goes into effect, it will, in fact, make it a crime to claim that the Jews killed Jesus. Well, let's see what the Bible says. Uh, uh, do we have anything to worry about there? Go with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and verse 22. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stands up filled with the Holy Ghost and preaches a message to the Jews in Jerusalem. And here's what he says, starting in verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, here we go. Ye, who's ye? Ye men of Israel, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. There it is. If this law was to go into effect, that would be a felony to preach and teach that passage of Scripture. That's a scary thought. <laughs> but it's not surprising. It's not surprising at all. Because we got to look at Israel and the devil's program against Israel. And there's a beautiful panoramic view of that in the book of Revelation. Go with me to the book of Revelation and chapter 12. Beginning in the first verse. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to deliver. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand Two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman 
which brought forth the man child. Now, you can go back and you can look over there in Genesis with uh, the dreams of Joseph, and it will clearly identify the woman as the nation of Israel. And of course, she brings forth a man child who shall rule with a rod of iron. The scripture clearly identifies that as the Lord Jesus Christ. So here's Israel, here's Christ, and here's the devil persecuting Israel. He says at verse 13, when the dragon saw that he was cast down to earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. That time of persecuting, it, is, it has been going on. Israel has been hated and persecuted by all nations and by the devil since their inception. But there is going to be a time of special, intense persecution which comes, which is called the time of Jacob's trouble. It is, you go to the prophecies of Daniel's, it's Daniel's 70th week, and it's the period of time covered in the book of Revelation. And uh, verse 15, he goes on and he says, uh, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, verse 14, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. The woman is Israel and the devil hates Israel. The devil persecutes Israel. The devil has always tried to destroy the nation of Israel. And why is that? Well, number one, it, it, it began because he knew that out of Israel, the promised seed would come, that seed that would crush his head. And he knew that. So he hated Israel. He hated Israel. He hated Israel. And now the seed has come. Christ has come. Death, burial, and resurrection. He's ascended. He was caught up. He's caught up at the throne of God. He sits at the right hand of God. Amen. And so the devil can't do anything about that, but he still hates the nation of Israel. And why does he hate the nation of Israel? Because they are God's people still. God still loves the nation of Israel. He is not done with the nation of Israel. He will still fulfill Every covenant promise, everything that he prophesied in the Old Testament for the nation of Israel, these were immutable covenants and promises that God will not take back. And they, because they are God's chosen people, and because the devil hates God, he hates whom God loves. Now, Right now, if you look at the great plan of the ages, you look at the plan of the ages, and you look at the different dispensations, if you will, like innings in a ball game, okay? You've got, the, you've got each dispensation. It was an inning. It was an inning in a big, in the, in the big heavenly ball game. Now, in the last inning... That's what Peter was talking about there in Acts chapter 2. Christ came. He said, I come only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came, and guess what? Israel, Jews, God's chosen people, you blew it in that inning. That's what the scripture says. When he came, they killed him. Their king and their God. The Jewish people are, in fact guilty of regicide, that's killing a king, and deicide, that's killing God, because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he came unto his own, and they received him not, and as Peter just said, they murdered him. All right? So what happened? Because they did that, they got benched for the next inning, okay? Because what was coming after the dispensation of Israel, the dispensation of the law. What, what comes after that? That's grace. That's the church age, okay? So for the church age, for the dispensation of grace, for this current time, this dispensation, Israel's been benched. They ain't in the game. They over on the bench. Now, if every 
individual Jewish person. What did Peter say? When you get over into Acts chapter 15, they get saved just like us. He puts no difference between Jew and Gentile in this dispensation. Not in all dispensations, but in this dispensation. The age of grace, the church age, there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. We all get saved exactly the same by simply putting our faith and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection in receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. Point blank, period. Everybody the same. No Jew, no Gentile. That's what's happening right now. But Israel, as a nation, as a people, they're sitting on the bench. They're sitting this one out. But guess what? When the church age is over, ha uh -huh, guess who gets to come back in and play that last inning? That's right. The Jews come back in. That's why the tribulation is called the time of Jacob's trouble because Israel's come back into the game. Matter of fact, the tribulation is all about Israel. It's God restoring his chosen people unto himself. And then at the what? And he, when Christ comes back at the end of the tribulation and he sits on the throne of David in Jerusalem and rules and reigns the whole earth with Israel, huh? he will have fulfilled everything that he promised them in the Old Testament. That's what's going to happen. But for right now, yeah, Israel killed him. And they're on the bench, they're on a timeout right now because of that. And that's what the Bible teaches. But if that house bill was to go into law, you couldn't teach that dispensational biblical truth. And there's a lot of so-called Christians that are not going to have any problem with that because they don't teach that. They teach something called replacement theology. They go into this Bible and they say God's all done with Israel and that the church has replaced Israel and we're the spiritual Israel and everything God promised Israel, he just canceled out and they don't have any future. They don't have any prophecy. They don't have nothing. That's called replacement theology and nothing could be more anti-Semitic than replacement theology. Most Calvinists are replacement theology. All all millennialists are replacement theology. All post-millennialists are replacement theology. Replacement theology is a what? Is a doctrine of devils. Because who's replacement theology against the Jews? What's that make it? Anti-Semitic. That's right. So the devil hates Israel. The devil is going to try to wipe out Israel in a way that has never been seen before during the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, but that's not going to happen. We've read the end of the book. We know who wins. But when you see any attack against Israel as God's chosen people and, and, and any type of philosophy that says God is done with Israel or God hates Israel or Israel are not, are not the people of God, whenever you see that, you know that the origin of that teaching is devilish. It comes straight from Satan because it is Satan who persecutes the woman that brought forth the man-child. So anything against the nation of Israel is from the devil. But that doesn't mean that Israel is not guilty. <laughs> Listen, God is a forgiver. God is a restorer, huh? Say amen if he's done it for you, hallelujah. But that does, just because God has restored me and saved me and he's using me now, doesn't mean I'm not guilty of a whole bunch of junk in the past. And it's the same with Israel. They are guilty of what they're guilty of. And, to, and, and, and the, Bible, the Bible documents it all. So if you're going to make it illegal, to say that the Jews killed Jesus, then you've made this book illegal. So, hey, we always knew it was going to get tough. He said at the end, perilous times shall come. And we're moving in to those perilous times of the end times before 
the Lord Jesus Christ comes for us, his church and his bride. And that's when Israel, after we're out of here, Israel comes off the bench. It's, then it's the time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel's 70th week. He restores them to himself and all is fulfilled. Amen. For this, for this current earth. Now there's going to be another, another earth, new heavens and a new earth. And Israel has their part in that too. But as far as, as far as this current heavens and earth are concerned, you got the rapture, you got Daniel's 70th week, then you got the millennium, and then goes to the great white throne of judgment. Everything is made brand new, and you go into a new heavens and earth. And that these these are glorious truths. And we 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 have this blessed hope. And this victory assured because we have the promises of a perfect book by divine providence, preserved, inspired, every single word we can trust and believe and know the future. Amen. So God bless you. Uh, it, it, uh, uh, I don't know too much about the political thing, but, uh, you know, hey, write your senators, whatever uh, this Hey, anti-Semitism is a bad thing, but this anti-Semitism law, that's a bad thing too, because it's going to make your Bible illegal. God bless you, and we'll see you again in the next one.